Welcome to the naming ceremony of the Federal and Powell Conference Room. I'm Fred St. Gore, and I had the pleasure and privilege of both working with and enjoying a close friendship with Farallon throughout her 14-year tenure with Evalve and the MicroClip Endeavor. I think that Farallon would be a bit mortified that Abbott is placing her name on this impressive space as she never sought out the limelight. But honestly, it makes a lot of sense. The heartfelt words that you're about to hear on this video from a preeminent group of cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, and Evalve originals will help you understand why. Farallon was a quietly yet remarkably driven individual who led with an effective combination of passion and compassion, integrity and humor. She was dedicated to bringing out the best in people around her with a singular goal of improving people's lives, or more precisely, patients' lives. And she, more than anyone, knew that the MitraClip was going to do this. Thanks to her determined, unwavering leadership, thousands of patients, patients' families, and all of us in the MitraClip community have benefited profoundly. It's a remarkable legacy for an all too short life. Her spirit will burn long and brightly in all of us who knew her. Farallon, we miss you dearly, but we know that wherever you are today, that you are smiling along with us as we celebrate you. Brings me joy to talk about Farallon and to know that her legacy is being honored today. Her vision and her passion are the reason that the MitraClip is on the market around the world today, helping tens of thousands of patients with mitral valve disease. Her absolute steadfast commitment to the success of this business was infectious, and all of the doctors and employees and board members, everyone knew that with Farallon that committed, there was no way it could fail, and it didn't. It was a huge success. So it was a privilege to work with Farallon, and I'm glad that her vision and her spirit are being honored and sustained today. I have many fond memories of Farallon. Perhaps prominent above others are the early morning meetings at ACC. It seems like they are always about 6 a.m. on a Sunday. This is where we discuss Everest II and realism data. Uh, this was before MitraClip was approved. Farallon always introduced the meetings with a tone of patience, perseverance, and confident optimism. She let the data speak for itself with an attitude that truth and justice would prevail. Farallon was the consummate CEO, always cool, always in charge, and above all, completely committed. Perhaps what makes these memories most poignant is that the road to FDA approval and ultimate outcome seemed quite unclear at the time. Yet here we are today, helping countless patients, but still beginning, just beginning down this road that Farallon navigated so elegantly. Hello, this is Paul Graben uh, from Dallas. I spent many hours in the conference room at uh, Evalve. Uh, got to know Farallon very well during that time. I'm very grateful to her for having the confidence in me to be one of the presenters at MitraClip at FDA, and she taught me a lot. And that whole experience helped my career in a big way. If I could pick out one single thing that I learned from her that I thought was fantastic was her quiet determination. She knew the therapy would work. She was determined to make it work. But she didn't throw a big fit or uh, make a lot of noise about it. She just quietly went about doing the right things, encouraging people, making sure this would work. I miss her. And I wish she could be around today to see that this therapy that she believed in and was so determined to see successful has now become a standard of care throughout the world. Uh, this is a special day and uh, I wish I could be there with you. Thanks. Bye-bye.
reflect upon Fairland Powell, I remember her initially as an engineer in a startup company. She progressed to the point where she became a CEO of a company. She proved to be a strong, determined, accomplished woman who knew how to handle people and build a team. If I were to pick someone to emulate, whether they be male or female, it would be Fairland Powell. She certainly deserves the accolades that are being bestowed upon her. And we will remember her as a graceful, determined lady. Let me start off by saying what a great idea this is. And Fred, thank you for including me. It's a great honor. I was at TCT many years ago listening to a future technology series in cardiovascular disease. And one of the lectures included the percutaneous intervention in mitral regurgitation. A young lady next to me questioned the feasibility of this idea, as well as would it change my practice? And if such a technology became available, would I use it? She later introduced herself as Farrell Powell. Coming from a small cardiovascular center in South Louisiana, I groveled a little bit and asked her to take a chance if I could participate in a research project. A year later, she contacted me to participate in Everest too. And ever since then, we became great friends. Farrellyn, thank you so much. Wherever you are, I know there are a lot of people thinking about you. First off, I'd like to thank the Abbott folks for uh, continuing to honor Farrellyn's memory by naming this conference room in her name. Thank you. I worked with Farrellyn for over 10 years, and a couple of the things that I think made her a great leader uh, were her perception and recognition. She was really great at perceiving what was going on in the company, uh, who was doing a great job, who was struggling, what groups were making progress, uh, and also when we were getting burned out and needed a break, needed a party, needed a better working relationship between groups. And that's, that's when the recognition piece came in. She was great at recognizing uh, accomplishments publicly and privately. Um, she really recognized what was going on with the company and provided recognition uh, when we needed it, whether it was a break, um, a party, uh, a reorganization, whatnot. Um, she was great at perception and recognition, and I feel like those are two uh, attributes that we could all continue to utilize and improve upon in our lives and in our work lives. Thanks. I was fortunate enough to be part of the Mitral Clip business early in its design phase in the 1990s. And during that phase, Fairland was frequently around, overlooking things, being compassionate, understanding the situation, but at the bottom line, always asking whether this would be something that would make patients with mitral regurgitation better. As Everest One began and the design was accomplished, I talked a lot about it on the talking circuit and used to start the talk with an old Zulu saying, it is best not to test the depth of a river with both feet. But with Everest One, Farallon, with great courage, simply did that. She jumped right in. And she jumped right in against a huge opponent, surgery, that was well known to make these patients better. Would the clip ever work? Farallon won, of course, and Farallon loved to win. Farallon was one of these amazing people that had not only vision, but incredible tenacity and persistence in achieving that vision, something that was truly remarkable and will be remembered in this. When I think about Farrell Lynn, uh, I, I'm really, rather than any one moment or event or anecdote, uh, really struck and overwhelmed by her personality and her presence. She was a driven, intense startup CEO, and at the same time, a remarkably calm, uh, kind of peaceful, thoughtful, uh, collected influence. And I think these two 
you know, very powerful personality traits together in one person are unusual and really defined her and are the impression that I carry with me of her today. Uh, I remain very touched by Farrellin's influence and uh, I'm really gratified that I could have known her. There are many adjectives that come to mind that help personify Farrellin to me. They include intelligent, kind, witty, considerate, visionary, friendly, sincere. But I guess the best way of thinking about her is she was always had that intangible. She was just somebody that you said, I want to work with her. My overriding lasting memory of Farrell Lynn, however, was in my backyard playing the drums in a rock band. That is my everlasting vision of Farrell Lynn. One of the biggest advances in medicine over the last decade was this, a seemingly innocuous little clip that you could place from the groin into the heart and fix a heart valve. It changed completely the way we thought about what we could do to the heart without having to actually see the heart. I was involved with the early work in this arena and I had these ideas about coils and staples and sometimes you need someone to sit you down and just bring reality to you. And it wasn't just the invention itself but how you would develop it. And this clip was only able to become commercialized because of this woman, Farallon Powell, who I became very close with and I know we're all celebrating today. Now Farallon was an interesting woman. Farallon had a unique ability to set you down, keep you calm, take all that creative energy, the juice, like a Labrador Retriever and sort of get you back into a place where you could actually hear the wisdom she was about to impart. It was that calmness, that ability to be assertive without being abrasive that allowed her to wrangle so many uh, of the folks, in, the inventors, the, the minds that were responsible for putting together the eval clip, uh, which has now become routinely used around the world to, to fix a problem with the mitral valve that has historically plagued heart surgeons and heart specialists because it's been so difficult to access, so difficult to repair. But I look at Farallon and realize every day how beautiful she was on the inside and on the outside. I miss her even more. Taken from us far too early, uh, a woman who always lived life to the fullest, and she frankly lived a full life in the years she was with us. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. us down but now it looks like things are finally coming around i know we've got a long long time